Okay, uh, good morning. Uh, my name is uh, Itzik Mantin. I'm from uh, uh, Imperva. And I'm uh, going to talk about uh, the bar mitzvah attack, uh, breaking SSL with a 13 year old uh, RSC4 weakness. Uh, I'm sorry that we don't start in time, just uh, because the keynote was late, so uh, they asked me to start uh, a little later. But I will try to finish uh, until 11.15. Uh, to get uh, so all of us can get, get to our break. So, uh, what is uh, bar mitzvah and uh, why bar mitzvah? So, so according to the uh, Jewish uh, tradition, when a boy becomes uh, 13, he's uh, becoming accountable for uh, for their actions. So, this is some kind of uh, Jewish uh, ceremony, and uh, the attack is based on uh, discovery of a weakness in RC4 which uh, I participated also in, the, in, in this research, which was done uh, 13 years ago. Uh, and the uh, weakness I'm talking about is called the invariance weakness. It was uh, first uh, published in the, uh, the, in the FMS paper, a uh, paper I uh, published with uh, Scott Fleur from Cisco and Adi Shamir from the Weizmann Institute uh, back in uh, 2001. And it was also part of my uh, uh, master uh, research. Some many years ago. So I will talk, I'll show a couple of things giving the background for uh, TLS, what are the objectives of TLS and uh, the, uh, the current, uh, uh, current security of TLS. Then I will uh, uh, give the background on, on RC4. I will go into details on what is the environment's weakness in RC4 uh, and what is its uh, security implications. Then I will uh, show uh, several attacks that can be used, can be mounted using this uh, vulnerability of, uh, of RC4 uh, when RC4 is the cipher that is used in uh, TLS. And I will uh, uh, final, finalize with uh, conclusions. So uh, TLS, on the previous name it was uh, SSL. It is uh, a protocol that protects uh, the, uh, the internet uh, used for uh, TCP communication. Uh, the most uh, uh, usable uh, version of it is HTTPS. Uh, SSL3 released in 1996, and we have uh, TLS1 from 1999, TLS1.1 uh, in 2006, and 1.2. Uh, TLS1.3 is uh, being developed uh, in, in these days, probably will be uh, finalized until the end of this year. Uh, this is a, more or less the uh, support of the different versions in, uh, uh, in, uh, of uh, SSL. This is taken, by the way, from a very nice uh, website, uh, SSL Pulse, uh, giving a lot of uh, SSL statistics I, I, I used from there. So as you can see, the uh, TLS version 1.0 is uh, supported by uh, almost every uh, uh, implementation, by almost all the servers. And TLS 1.1 and 1.2 are still about 50% uh, uh, deployment. What are the objectives of TLS? Well, TLS comes to uh, guarantees uh, several things. The first one, it allows the uh, mutual authentication between the server and the client. So the client, the browser, can authenticate the server. The server, on the other hand, can authenticate the client, even though it is, in most of the cases, it is not, the, the second part is not used. Once they authenticate each other, uh, TLS provides the capability to uh, protect all the data that is transmitted between the parties, uh, which means, in cryptography, it means to, uh, to uh, encrypt it, uh, to pr provide the data confidentiality, and to authenticate it, meaning to, uh, to provide the data integrity. So what are the uh, models where uh, uh, TLS should work? It, is, uh, it should work first in the passive model where the, the attacker is just being in the line between, uh, between the client and the server. He only eavesdrops. And in this model, SSL is supposed to, uh, to provide security, uh, which is uh, quite clear. A more uh, complicated uh, uh, set up, which is harder to, uh, to obtain from the attacker point of view, uh, and, uh, but is also a harder to protect, but given that it happens, it is harder to protect against that, but SSL uh, does that in most of the cases, is where the attacker is uh, what the so-called man in the middle. So there is this uh, Alice wanting to communicate to her uh, Facebook account, 
and the attacker is here in the middle. He takes everything that Alex sends. He takes it. It, it, uh, it can send it to, the, to, to Facebook. It can just uh, keep it. it. It can generate new packets of its own or new requests. It can do whatever it wants. Uh, and also in this model, uh, TLS is uh, uh, providing uh, security. And uh, we, we will discuss uh, these two mods in detail in, uh, in the continuation of this uh, lecture. Uh, in the last couple of years, there were quite many uh, attacks on, uh, uh, on SSL. I think the first one in the, uh, that started this uh, SSL attacks era is uh, the Beast attack. Another one was an attack on uh, the, R, the usage of RC4 in, uh, in, uh, in TLS. Uh, two other attacks on the compression methods, uh, crime and time and breach. Uh, several attacks that used the different uh, uh, weaknesses in the protocol negotiation to, to, run, uh, to make uh, the, uh, the parties uh, downgrade using a, a, secure, uh, a less secure operation like the Poodle and the Freak. Uh, padding Oracle attacks like Lucky 13 and uh, implementation attacks, attacks usually on OpenSSL, but sometimes also on other implementations like uh, a Heartbleed and uh, also the, the Freak attack is a downgrade attack that is specific to, uh, to OpenSSL. Let's go to uh, RC4. So uh, this is the statistics that I downloaded on March 9. Uh, of the usage of RC4. I think the, uh, the most important thing here, you can see that 51.2% uh, of the uh, servers that were participating in these statistics support some version of RC4, but this is not the most important uh, uh, statistics. I think the most important one is this one. 23.3 are used with modern browsers, meaning that in many cases, in one out of four uh, uh, cases, Servers that work with a modern browser that supports the many variants of, uh, of SSL and TLS and a lot of uh, very secure cipher seeds uh, still chooses to uh, work with RC4, even though it is, uh, it is not the strongest cipher. Uh, and uh, uh, this, uh, this, uh, um, this input is, is very significant. RC4 is a stream cipher. Now, uh, the way stream ciphers work is there is an uh, algorithm that is called a key stream generator, which takes a key and generates a random key stream uh, from it. And then this random key stream is being uh, XORed with uh, the plain text. This is the plain text, and that produced the ciphertext. The, the, the XOR operation has a very, very uh, useful uh, 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 attribute from a crypto cryptographic point of view, because if this uh, if this key stream is completely random or pseudo-random, then it provides maximum security, complete security. If it is not random, then it does not provide uh, uh, security. And this is uh, more or less the, the, the thing that is problematic with, uh, with RC4. Uh, RC4 is uh, short for a uh, revest code 4. There are also RC2, RC5, and RC6. Uh, for about 30 years, it is the most uh, popular uh, st uh, stream cipher uh, in, in the world. Uh, it was, uh, uh, the details of RC4 were kept as a trade secret of, of RSA uh, until uh, the 2001, uh, where uh, an attack, an, an effective attack on, uh, a practical attack on WP protocol was, uh, was published, and, uh, and uh, RSA had uh, to, uh, to, to admit that this is indeed uh, the, the algorithm and, uh, uh, and to, that it is problem, indeed problematic in uh, WP protocol. Uh, this is how uh, RC4 looks like. It is very, uh, I, I think this is one of the, the, the reasons that it is uh, against the, uh, that uh, popularity because uh, as you can see, it is only like uh, four or five uh, rows, uh, lines of code. Uh, for the uh, key scheduling part and another four lines in the uh, so the random generation generation part so it is uh, uh, very popular you can uh, just remember it uh, you know uh, in, in your in your head unlike most of the other ciphers which are uh, impossible and uh, essentially it has a state where the state is this permutation of the numbers from zero to to two hundred and fifty five uh, 
Uh, and there are two indices in this, uh, uh, in this state, i and j, where on every, uh, in, in order to generate a new uh, key stream byte, RC4 advances this uh, i, this index, uh, by one. It, in, it uh, advances j by a pseudo-random uh, variable, which is uh, s of i. And then it uh, uses uh, both of them to, uh, to emit another, uh, another byte. And it was believed for many years that, the, that this uh, algorithm is, is secure and provides, uh, uh, and provides a randomness. However, uh, RC4 is not really pseudo-random. It's supposed to be pseudo-random, but it is not. It is known uh, for, uh, from the year of 2000. There was a distinguisher of RC4 that was uh, uh, that was uh, uh, published in uh, two, uh, the year 2000 by Fleur and Meguru. Uh, these patterns, by the way, were used by an attack on, uh, on RC4 in TLS uh, uh, about two years ago. There is also uh, a distinguisher of 2 to the 26, which is essentially like uh, 64 million uh, bytes uh, of uh, RC4, which I published in 2005. And there is also a prediction algorithm that w waits uh, that in one event out of two to the 45 uh, uh, bytes can predict what is going, what the next bits are going to be, a uh, prediction attack. However, when you, uh, the, the most important uh, problem with RC4 is not that it is not pseudo-random in the generation, in the key stream. The most important thing is that all this the key scheduling algorithm, which takes a key and translates it into a um, permutation, and the beginning of the uh, pseudo-random generation are extremely weak. Uh, it is known for, uh, since 2001, that this is the weakest link of RC4. Uh, there are uh, biases in the, uh, in the key stream. There is the second byte bias that, uh, again, part of my master thesis, uh, that the second byte has the a double probability to be zero, and there are many other biases. There are many correlations between the key that is used and the key stream that is generated. And now these correlations are very, uh, are very dangerous because if one has the idea about what are the first key stream bytes, he can deduce uh, what was the key that, uh, that, that was used. So uh, the IV weakness that was used for a practical web attack uh, another version of the web attack uh, that uh, uh, was uh, able to work even when you throw away the first 256 bytes of RC4. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, a faster uh, web attack in 2007. Uh, more key, stream, key to key stream correlations were uh, published in 2005. Uh, another type of uh, weaknesses in the initialization algorithm is that uh, the initial permutation bytes uh, are uh, the, the first state that RC4 starts to work with is completely not uh, random. There are very strong biases in many cases there. Uh, but the, uh, the weakness that I'm uh, going to focus in this session is the uh, invariance weakness, uh, which was, as I said, published in the Fleur Mantin Shamir uh, uh, paper. So, what is the uh, invariance weakness? Uh, in, the, in this FMS research, we described the uh, two uh, uh, weaknesses. The first one we call the uh, IV weakness. The other one we call the invariance weakness. The first one got a lot of attention because it was used to, uh, to, to, attack an, an, to, to, to mount a practical attack on, on an actual protocol, WP. Uh, the second one was left in the shadows for, uh, uh, for 13 years. But so now it is uh, his time to, uh, uh, to, to, to see the light. Uh, the idea of the invariance weakness is a class of RC4 weak keys. It is a very large class. Every uh, RC4 key has a probability of 2 to the minus 24, which is 1 to 16 million, uh, to get uh, this, uh, uh, to, to be in this, uh, in this class. So this is, in cryptography terms, this is, uh, this is a very uh, significant uh, number. And uh, uh, when such key is used, there is a very, very bad mixing of the key with the, uh, with the permutation. So essentially, the permutation that RC4 starts to work with has, several, has a part of it that remains intact for the entire key scheduling algorithm. Now, since the, uh, the key scheduling algorithm starts with the identity permutation, which is all the numbers from 0 to 20 to 255 uh, uh, 
uh, ordered, then uh, this part remains the same at the beginning of the stream. The way it looks, I hope you can see it uh, from here. So I, I will not go ex to all the details of this uh, weakness because I want to focus uh, most of, the, of this presentation to the, how to use it on the, for, for the attack on TLS. Uh, th this is all old news. So if you have the list, you can think, think of it as the key that is used by RC4, and each uh, column here is a byte of the key, where the most significant bit is the, uh, the top one, and the least significant bit is the uh, bottom one. So whenever uh, there is some pattern in the LSVs, in the least significant bits of the entire key, then, uh, uh, then this pattern is translated into a pattern in the uh, permutation and into a pattern in the key stream. Meaning that if you have this pattern in the, uh, in the least significant bits, then you, will, you, you can predict what are going to be the least significant bits of the key stream. Now, in addition to the least significant bits, there is also all the, the entire first byte that need to be set uh, for some uh, uh, very, uh, very technical reasons, and uh, this additional bit that need to be set for again for more technical reasons. But essentially, if you have a key that has all these all these bits set, then you will get a permutation that you know all the uh, least significant bits of it, and uh, furthermore, you know uh, the first uh, key stream. Uh, the first, uh, the least significant bits of the first key stream uh, bytes. So this is the uh, invariance weakness. The, okay, now I said that this is one to the uh, 16 uh, million. Now the reason is that this attack can work on any number of least significant bits that you choose. For example, it, it can work on a single one and then you get this uh, two to the 34, to the 24. You, you can work with uh, with two uh, least significant bits and, and more, but uh, the the largest class is the one that is uh, for the for a single uh, LSB. So essentially, this is uh, the, the the technical details of the attack. That if every bit of the key, every byte of the key has uh, is um, satisfying this uh, equation. Uh, then all the swaps of the, in the key scheduling are actually between uh, an odd number and an odd number, and an even number with an even number. So uh, we call this uh, preservation of the, of the least significant bits by the, uh, the swaps. So as I said, the uh, final permutation in every, uh, uh, in, in the location zero, you, you are ensure you're guaranteed to have a value that has LSB uh, zero and, uh, and uh, uh, same for all the others. So, so we have an initial uh, an LSB leakage in the initial permutation. Um, however, the, uh, every swap when the uh, pseudo random generation uh, works has, is ruining this, uh, this uh, very uh, uh, delicate uh, situation. Every swap uh, is, uh, is between an odd, odd index and an even index. Uh, so uh, we do have a, a leakage of the plain text bits. However, uh, we need to somehow cope with these uh, uh, swaps. And this is the reason that the, uh, th this pattern in the key stream begins with very uh, high probability, but continues with a probability that goes lower and lower uh, to, uh, until it, uh, it vanishes. Uh, these are the numbers and the sizes of uh, the different uh, classes of uh, wikis. As I said, it is uh, the, the largest one for a 16-byte key. The size is uh, 2 to the minus 24 from the entire RC4 key space. Uh, for shorter keys, for example, 8-byte keys, it is 2 to the minus uh, 16. By the way, when you are using uh, keys that are uh, of uh, odd size, this attack doesn't work. It works only for, uh, for uh, even, an, uh, le even length uh, of keys. Again, for technical reasons, which I don't want to get into. Uh, also, uh, uh, but I also want to mention that. And uh, for, uh, if you want to focus on, on two LSBs or three LSBs, then uh, the sizes uh, go and, uh, and drop. Okay, so uh, we know that when a weak key is used, 
uh, many plain text bits uh, leak. So there are two questions that we need to answer. The first one, can we tell uh, when we had a weak key? Because if we can tell when we had a weak key, then uh, we, we cannot uh, detect the, uh, the, the, the correct event, and we cannot know when we have this uh, bit leaks. Now, the answer is we, we can, because in many cases, the encryption is of a data that is already partially known. There are headers that are being encrypted, and there, are, uh, there is statistics of the, of the data that you're encrypting. Uh, so it, it is easy to know in, in, in many cases what, what are the bits that, are, uh, that, that this event has occurred, because we see the, uh, the ciphertext, and we know the plain text, so we can see also the key stream for some parts, and then we can, uh, we can know that this pattern actually uh, occurred. Another question, probably more, uh, more important, is how many bits can we predict? And um, I'm not sure if you can see this, so I'll try to uh, maybe enlarge it. Okay, I can't enlarge it. Um, but uh, what you can see here is that the probability, this is the line of uh, uh, 0 0.5, which is the, uh, uh, what, what you would expect to predict a bit uh, if the uh, PRNG had worked uh, perfectly. And we start with 0 0.7. This is the prediction uh, probability of the, of the, first, uh, 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 the first LSB. And this number goes and drops until it vanishes around uh, 35 or 40. Now, th this is really bad news for the attack, because uh, the first uh, 36 bytes of, of the, uh, that are encrypted with RC4, when used in TLS, are uh, f the finished message of the handshaking protocol, which is nothing that we can do with. So we had to find a way to, uh, uh, to improve this. Uh, so uh, the reason that we have this, uh, this uh, degradation is because as I said, the permutation is ruined when the uh, key stream is generated. And uh, the bit prediction is just getting out of sync, and it happens when the index J is just uh, getting out of sync. It hits uh, a part that was already ruined. So we did, uh, did the switch to uh, finding not a pattern in the least significant bit, but a pattern in the difference between one sig least significant bit and the other, and the next least significant bit. And in this case, we got much more, much better results. Uh, what you can see here, this is the blue line that is the previous one. As you can see, it is, uh, finishes, it, it, it vanishes around uh, 35 to 40. However, the red one continues uh, until essentially the, uh, the, the hundred uh, bit byte. So what we have here, this is for uh, Q equals one, meaning that this is for uh, a single LSB. This is for uh, Q equals two, Qu quite a similar picture. This is for uh, Q equals uh, three. So it is uh, essentially the same picture. We still have information. This uh, pattern is, is kept for, and, and is expressed in the key stream in the probabilities of, 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 of the bits in the key stream uh, for the first uh, 100 bytes. So let's try to, uh, to, to, to sum this up, okay? So uh, when we're using the, the largest class, the one with a single least significant bit, and I'm thinking about uh, the 16 byte uh, keys of RC4, if, if you use uh, shorter keys, you have, uh, you have a more severe problem. Then uh, the first uh, bit, the first LSB can be predicted with a probability of uh, uh, 0.68. Uh, the, the 37th bit, which is also interesting when we're talking about TLS, can be predicted with a probability of uh, 0.546. And the 100th bit can be predicted with a probability of uh, 0.503. So um, the uh, tracking of these patterns is uh, possible for the 37th byte uh, with an advantage over one half, that is one uh, over 22. For the 68 byte, one over 64. For the 100 byte, uh, we can track the, uh, the pattern for 
with a probability of 1 uh, over uh, 330. So the bottom line of all this analysis that when uh, you're using RC4 and when you are hitting a weak key, then the first 100 LSBs are exposed to leakage. They can be leaked, and, uh, um, and this leakage can be used to, uh, to uh, attack, uh, the, the, uh, to attack uh, RC4. So I talked about uh, the invariance thickness. Now I'll, uh, we'll see how to take this, uh, uh, these observations. Uh, most of them, as I said, are 13 year old. Uh, the, the, the switch to the diff is uh, something that is new that we had to overcome in order to, uh, uh, to use this for the, uh, for the TLS protocol. So first I, I will describe the attack uh, scenario. Um, this is a, a general scenario, but will repeat itself in, uh, in, the, in the different uh, versions, the different variants of the attack. So the attacker has to wait for a hit. A hit in this case is an RC4 key that is used, that is coming from this uh, weak uh, class. Once the, uh, the hit occurred, the uh, attacker identifies that it occurred, and uh, it is, um, um, and he uh, uses the hit uh, to, uh, uh, to identify the uh, plaintiff uh, patterns. So he has to wait two to the 24 uh, keys, two to the 24 attempts, until he uh, is uh, hitting a, a weak key. Once that, that happens, then he has several dozens or maybe 100 hits um, to, uh, to get a successful tracking. Because remember that when we have a weak key, we don't have in, in all the times the, uh, the, the pattern being preserved. There is some probability, and this probability depends on what is the length that we're trying to obtain. Uh, so essentially, we will uh, focus on a number that is uh, one billion, uh, just for the sake of simplicity. So we we'll assume that the attacker uh, needs uh, one billion attempt in order to uh, to get uh, uh, to get a successful uh, tracking. When that happens, uh, the attacker uh, predicts a key stream uh, least significant bit uh, differences, and he can recover. Uh, it can recover the uh, corresponding plain text uh, LSBs. So we're talking about a recovering LSB. It's just a leakage on the, on the data that is encrypted. This is not the entire data. So what, what can you do with, with LSBs? Does this, is, is this sufficient? Well, in some cases, it, it, is not sufficient. it is not sufficient to mount a practical attack. In other cases, it is. So I'll give you several examples. The most... Uh, I think probably the most uh, significant thing that you can do with LSVs is to uh, accelerate uh, different uh, trial and error attacks. Uh, and, and usually when you use a trial and error attack, then you are subject to a detector that you know, just uh, count your uh, request and at some point decides to, to block you because they sent too many requests. So you can, uh, uh, using this, you can sneak below uh, any threshold-based uh, detectors. And, uh, uh, um, one of the examples that I I'm going to discuss in, in detail is a dictionary attack on, on weak passwords. I took uh, a database of uh, weak passwords with uh, some statistics. It is uh, two or three years old, but still I think this is not very different from, the, uh, from what is the, si the situation as is today. And now the most important uh, columns in this table is, the, is this column, which is the number of web accounts that this statistic says are using the top uh, 100,000 and 10,000 uh, uh, most common passwords. And uh, this one, which is uh, the uh, average case of how many uh, uh, attempts should I do if I already know the LSB of the password. So in this case, from uh, 100 attempts, I reduce to uh, one and a half. And if I know the LSB of the password, then uh, I only need uh, one or two uh, attempts until I get the, uh, the correct one. If I know the, uh, the password is from the top 1,000, then I only need uh, four attempts. And if I know it is from the top 10,000, I still only need 18 attempts. So this is one thing that you can do with, uh, uh, with uh, less significant bits uh, to accelerate uh, uh, dictionary attacks on uh, passwords. 
Another uh, uh, acceleration uh, that, that can be done, uh, consider the credit card numbers. In the credit card numbers, uh, you, you have 16 digits. However, you don't have a, a, a full entropy of these uh, 16 digits because uh, the first uh, six, uh, ba uh, six numbers are, are known, are uh, identifiers of, of your bank, of the credit, of the credit card company. Uh, the four suffix, uh, the last uh, four uh, uh, digits, are not very safe, not very secure, because it is, uh, they, uh, they appear in, in, in many documents, so yeah, we cannot count on, on their uh, security. And there's also a one-byte checksum. So again, when you're, check it, when you're uh, having the, uh, the least significant bits of all the, these 16 digits, then instead of uh, using, uh, of needing uh -huh. 100,000 attempts, you, uh, the number is reduced to, uh, to 1,500, which is, a, uh, which is again, a significant uh, acceleration of, uh, of trial and error uh, attack. Uh, the next example is, uh, is uh, session cookies. Uh, most of the, of the attacks on, on, on SSL focus on session cookies because, because these are the, the, the natural victims. They, they have a lot of uh, value. The, if you have the session cookie of someone, then you can uh, do session hijacking and, uh, and use his, uh, uh, his connection to, uh, to his account. Uh, so in PHP session cookies, there are 32, uh, uh, there are different, uh, different sizes that can be, that can be used. Uh, so essentially, I think the, mo the, the longest one is uh, 32 uh, uh, characters. Uh, when it is 32 characters, then you can accelerate the, uh, the brute force on such cookie to, uh, in a, by a factor of 2 to the 32, which is 4 billion. For ASP session cookies, uh, it is uh, 16 characters, and then you can reduce it uh, in a factor of 2 to the 16. I'll start with uh, the first attack, which is a man-in-the-middle attack. Uh, this is the, essentially the, the same setup that was used in, in the beast attack. I will talk about it in a, in, in a few seconds. Uh, the attacker, um, the attack requires that uh, only a single hit will occur. Uh, and once it, it happens, then uh, the first 100 first bytes are uh, at risk. Uh, our uh, uh, information is leaked from them. Uh, this is the two advantages of this attack on previous attacks on, on TLS. Uh, there is also, of course, the, uh, the downside that uh, we only extract partial information. We don't extract it, uh, it fully. Okay, so this is the this this is this, this uh, setup the setup of the beast attack. There is a, a user, there is an application server. The user logs into the application server, and then he gets a session cookie. The attacker is assumed to be in two locations. Also, is a man in the middle, and also is able to run a JavaScript code on the uh, on, on on the client. And at this point, the, this JavaScript generates a, a large number of uh, requests. Uh, this request never arrived to the application server because they are stopped by this man in the middle uh, a part of the, uh, of the attacker. And essentially, after one billion connections, uh, the, the attack succeeds. One important thing about this attack, that it is insensitive to resets meaning that uh, in the beast attack and the previous attacks on RC4 and, and, and the crime attack, the, you had to aggregate the information uh, along, uh, the, uh, along, along the uh, series of attempts. So meaning that you started aggregating information, aggregating information until at some point you have enough information and you recovered the session cookie. So in some of these attacks, you need that the key will, be, uh, will remain fixed which is not always the case. In other attacks, uh, you, uh, you, you need the, in all the attacks, I'm sorry, in all of these attacks, you need to, uh, to rely on the fact that the session cookie that you're trying to steal will remain valid until you end this, uh, this attack. And again, this is not uh, always the case. However, our attack is not uh, sensitive to resets. If you have a reset, I, I don't mind because I just, 
and continue to wait for my hit. Once I get my hit, I don't, I don't mind if you, know, you, uh, you had a, a 500 session, different session keys along my attempt. I only wait for a hit. Once I get a hit, I'm, I, I get success. So this is a, a very uh, important uh, uh, attribute of this, uh, of this vulnerability and of this uh, attack, of this scenario. And uh, the next couple of attacks, well, I, uh, I, I will show how it can be, uh, it can use to, uh, to accelerate the attack and to work in, uh, in uh, different modes and different setups that were considered uh, secure until today. So the first one is uh, a group attack. You know, one billion uh, TLS connections on a single, uh, on, on, a, on a single victim can take long. However, the, if I can put myself as a man in the middle between uh, several users and, and, and the application, then I can try to go, uh, attack all of them at once. Now, uh, since uh, the attack is insensitive to resets, then I don't need to aggregate, I, I don't mind that in some cases I'm working on one session cookie, on the one of uh, this girl here, and on the uh, other attempts, I'm working on the session cookie of this girl. I just uh, don't mind at all. And then uh, this number of a billion can be reduced by a factor of however, uh, whatever is the number of users I can attack simultaneously. Now, the question is, is this possible? Well, this uh, setup of men in the middle, the most uh, typical uh, ways to obtain that is by you know just uh, putting a, a Wi-Fi of your own and then let people connect to it. Uh, for example, in one of the of, of the malls uh, around here, and then you are becoming a man in the middle for all of them. So it is very applicable for for a group attack. Uh, moreover, the other scenario is if you are able to uh, to have a DNS poisoning, um, and if you have DNS poisoning, then again many uh, people. Are, uh, are getting to your, uh, uh, to your site, uh, to your application, instead of the real application. And then, again, this is uh, uh, very applicable for group attack. So the first attack was uh, same as the, as, as the beast attack, but this one gives us an, a, a way to accelerate it, to work on several um, uh, victims uh, simultaneously. And uh, eventually, we will uh, manage to, uh, uh, to, uh, to, to attack one of them. Uh, the third uh, variant of the attack is even is take this uh, this analysis or this uh, um, this change and one step further. If we can, I can hack. Uh, if I can use a group to uh, accelerate the attack, why not using just uh, uh, all the users of an application? So consider, for example, that Facebook had used RC4. It, it, it doesn't use RC4. It used a couple of months ago, but today it is not used. If you try to connect to Facebook with a uh, uh, browser that supports only RC4, you will fail. I try. So uh, if you are able to, uh, to be at the entrance to Facebook, then you can only listen, you can sniff on the line, you, uh, you collect the uh, data that you see until you see a hit. Now again, remember, we need one billion attempts. But if we're on the internet to Facebook, then we will have this uh, one billion attempt. Meaning that uh, this, uh, uh, we can uh, scale this, uh, this attack. I don't mind what, which of the users, that each of the users is using a different uh, session cookie. I, can, I only need a single hit. Now, if I don't care about uh, the fact that different users have different uh, data, then I can not only, uh, uh, direct uh, a target uh, session cookies. I can also target uh, passwords because different users have different passwords. So the previous attacks, the Beast and, uh, and the Royal Holloway attacks, they, they had to focus on session cookies because they need that the session cookie will be uh, transmitted over and over. In this case, we are actually attacking uh, only in sniffing mode. We are a passive attacker, not a man in the middle, which is much more uh, uh, much e easier to obtain. So uh, 
One billion is a large number, but when you're looking at the statistics of, of, uh, of uh, Facebook, they have daily uh, 900, uh, about 900 million new, uh, daily active users. Each one of them probably has uh, several logins. So th this is, uh, okay, you, you can say we, we are listening to, to Facebook and every day we can, uh, we can hack the accounts of like uh, four or maybe 10 users. Uh, so maybe this is not a large number, but it is, uh, it is significant. It means that we can, we can do something with this attack. People are using SSL to protect their data. They should be, uh, they, they want to know that uh, the data is secure. Uh, now, uh, the, I will end with, this is not an attack, but it's mainly a, a concern or an observation. Every time, you're sending uh, your secret over a TLS connection that is using RC4, actually you have one to the 16 million uh, probability to get a bad key. And you have uh, one to a billion chance uh, to leak a significant portion of quite, so, so, quite many bits of your, of your data. Now, th these numbers are small. However, uh, they are definitely not, not negligible. Uh, remember that the statistics of, uh, of TLS today it uh, talks about 30% uh, of the TLS connections in the world being used with, uh, with RC4. So this is a significant number. We're talking about, uh, about billions and billions of, of, of connections every, probably, maybe even every hour, definitely every day. And some part of this, this part is not negligible, are uh, vulnerable to, to such attacks. Okay, so uh, what is the... Conclusion of this, uh, of this uh, research. Uh, first, we show that the invariance weakness uh, in RC4 can be used to mount new attacks on uh, TLS, uh, new attacks on, uh, on TLS when using RC4. Second, uh, we show that the, this attribute of this, uh, of, this, uh, of this attack, that it is insensitivity to reset, uh, it opens the door to new attack scenarios, to group attacks, and to uh, sniffing attacks. And uh, we demonstrated the first uh, passive attack on, on, on TLS, at least the first, uh, the, to, to my knowledge. Uh, the conclusion, well, RC4 is not a secure cipher. However, I, it can hardly be set as a conclusion because these, these are quite uh, old news. The initialization mechanism of RC4 is, is very weak. I would even say extremely weak, but this is also old news. I think the most important news is that uh, the impact of these facts that are known on the security of systems that use RC4 is currently, seems to be underestimated. I think that there is, uh, this cipher is known to be weak for like 13 years, and it's, it is still used in 30% of the, of the TLS connections. So this is, uh, uh, this is a, not, not a good number, so the, 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 my conclusion is that RC4 should be, uh, should, be, uh, should be removed, should be disabled in, in many systems, by browsers, by, by servers, by, by everyone. Um, and we'll finish with uh, some, uh, with some uh, just a second. Okay, I will finish with uh, uh, some uh, some links. This is news from the from the, the last uh, the, the last weeks, the last month. So the first one is that uh, about a week ago, a new attack was published on on RC4 was when used in, in TLS. Uh, it detects the situation where uh, uh, it is using the IMAP protocol for uh, uh, for uh, protecting mail communication. So uh, the attackers were able to demonstrate how. Uh, in, in this protocol, passwords are being encrypted uh, over and over. 
so they were able to uh, uh, to attack uh, passwords. Another uh, thing that uh, was changed is this. Uh, you can see this. Uh, this is RFC seven four six five, which was published uh, about a month ago uh, by the ITF. It is called a It's titled the prohibiting RFC four uh, uh, cipher suites. And uh, the last one is and the last one is statistics that I got uh, uh, from uh, this morning, where you can see that the uh, usage of uh, RC4 has reduced to the 23.5 percent that I showed you uh, that was from uh, two weeks ago into 22. So the direction is uh, positive. There is all already an RFC and uh, an acceptance that RC4 should be uh, should be removed for SSL. Now the only thing is just to to actually do it. Thank you. Okay, the, the question was how many plain text bytes are needed in order to recover a key. Now, the answer is that, uh, as I showed, the, the weakness and the leakage is on the first 100 bytes of the encryption. Meaning that if you are waiting just for encrypting a, a, a long, uh, a, a large amount of data, you, you will not get uh, what you want. You cannot get uh, uh, a, a, a weak key because the key is, remains the same one. So you have to attack the first, you can attack the first uh, 100 bytes uh, from a large number of, uh, TL, of TLS connections, each one of them using a, a different key. So uh, assuming that we can intercept a large number of, of uh, uh, the, the whole transmission between the client and the server, right? Mm -hmm. And we, also can infer which a proportion of those bytes with the location of, the, of those bytes, which we know that are, we know the plain text for those, mm -hmm. right? Can we get back to the key in a reasonable amount of... of well, what you can do, you can know this, all this number of, the number of bits that make it a weak key. Meaning that in that case, you will know 24 bits of the key. So you're waiting for a, for a weak key to occur. Once it occurred, you know that it is a weak key, so you know 24 bits of this key. All this LSBs in the first byte and the... Uh... Um, the question was uh, who is using RC4 essentially and, and, and who is not. I, I, I noticed that Facebook had disabled RC4. I, I heard that I think PayPal and Twitter also disabled RC4. So I think, uh, I, I think this is good news. I think the industry is going to the right direction. Um, but still, there is this, this number of 30% which, uh, which, which uh, fails, to, uh, fails to, the, to the grade. Okay, thank you.